Welcome to the Steve Reeve Podcast with the best moments from the past week and a few things that didn't make it there. Powered by Coldwell Banker Ford McMurray. We love YMM. Monday. Uniting the nation right now should be love. Love is most important. Love is best. But not so much love. It's uh, hate for a haircut. Our collective reaction to Justin Trudeau's new haircut specifically. Good news for the disapproving. That's not election-winning hair on them right now, right? <laughs> I don't know if you haven't seen the photos. Uh, take a look around. Some people have been comparing him to a few different uh, people. Maybe some uh, early Adam Sandler haircut goodness. Uh, a lot of people drawing the comparison to Lloyd Christmas, Jim Carrey's character from Dumb and Dumber, of course. It's not quite as bowl cutty. Like it, we're not like on Will from Stranger Things territory here. We're honestly right back to that weird political attack ad from back before he actually became prime minister. You remember the one where it was just like, oh, but he does this. Oh, but he does this. Oh, but you know what? It's the hair. Have you seen the hair? I just don't think he's ready. Not ready enough because he's got a certain haircut. <laughs> And now I look at the new photos and I'm like, ooh, ooh, what are we doing here? What are we doing here as a nation? Pink Floyd in the news again because of perhaps making an appearance on top 20 charts for the first time in a long time. And you might think, hey, wait, no, did I miss a Pink Floyd song on the Stranger Things soundtrack? Because, you know, like Kate Bush and Metallica before it, they've seen huge amounts of success from just being included in that show in awesome, awesome ways, meaningful ways. But Pink Floyd now looking like they'll have a top 20 uh, uh, spot in the charts for the first time in 42 years because of the song that they released this year, Hey Hey Rise Up, which is the first original song that they've even put out since the 90s and was, of course, all about trying to bring attention to and as well, uh, you know, not support in any way. Russia's invasion of Ukraine, raising funds specifically to affect, uh, to, to, to help those that, who have been affected by war. Proceeds directly donated to the humanitarian relief for Ukraine. I was on vacation not too long ago and finally took a look at the memory card from the camera <laughs> and spotted uh, the photos that I was very happy to take. Photos of a weird thing to find. A couple of superhero figures, Batman and Superman, on top of a cross on the roof of a church in Victoria. And apparently they've been there for quite some time, for years, and even locals, not all of them know about it. But I was able to find out, I'm sharing the news, and I want to know, in return, what little-known discoveries have you encountered? You know, quote-unquote discoveries throughout Canada. I've uh, gotten some text so far, been put on to a couple of interesting things. I've never even heard of Spotted Lake in BC. Apparently this is a natural phenomenon. Looks like a piece of art, like looks like somebody has absolutely created this, but it's just a lake drying out, and it kind of dries into smaller pools that each have different slightly different mineral deposits giving them slightly different colors greens blues aquas yellows a little bit of oranges and reds in there too just really weird to look at kind of as a whole uh, also was put onto this is just a weird thing to me uh, in crooked bush saskatchewan i have heard of this before actually but apparently there is just this area where you can walk for like a 1.5 hectares uh, even though there's a guide, you can walk through like a, speci a specified trail and everything. But what's going on is the aspen trees just don't grow right there. Normally trees reaching for the sky, standing pretty tall and straight. But just about every single one of these aspens is all gnarled and twisted. And people go, why? Uh, probably because of something to do with genetics or conditions or, or, or something that was present. But a lot of people also think maybe it's just purely supernatural style. Blair Witch Project style. I would absolutely take a walk through that area. There's also a place with 75,000 signposts in Watson Lake, Yukon. Had no idea about that. Kind of hard to find your way, though, with all of those signposts around. But that's kind of the destination in and of itself, isn't it? Let me know. Where have you been? What weird things have you seen? I want to hear the tale. Tuesday. New study says, oh, here we go. Prepare yourself, gird yourself, that uh, those under the age of 40 should not be having any alcohol whatsoever. It's not good for you. Um, for people aged in the 15 to 39 year range, no health benefit to drinking alcohol is what it says. And there was a risk included health loss by drinking more than one tenth of a standard drink. More than one tenth. And that was for males. Females increased health risks after one quarter of a standard drink. And those who are under the age of 40 uh, are most likely to experience injuries after the fact as well. I feel like there's, I don't know, I haven't gone into the science, the real deep part of this study in particular, but I, it does strike me as being probably to do with the amount of alcohol that those injuries come into.
You know what I mean? We're all young and think we're invincible at some point. And that's what gets us into trouble when it comes to maybe mixing alcohol with it. Of course, always drink responsibly. Always, always, always. And the age is the age for, you know, whatever wisdom reason within society. But I gotta say, I don't know if it's like super healthy for anybody to drink a lot of alcohol, right? I, I don't know if that's really the point of it. I mean, it's not like it's liquid bread. And even then, I don't know how healthy it would be. It's there for a reason. You know what I mean? And I think just about every single person has had about the same response that I've seen in comment sections on this article, on the study, wherever it's been posted that I've been able to see. And that is that, come on, we only live so long. And not to say everybody has to get their their drink on. Certainly not. Some people, absolutely not a good idea. Some people don't enjoy it. That's all fine and dandy. But if you're going to enjoy it, you're able to do it responsibly. I don't know. Having this... Slight health risk and elevated risk of injury, decide for yourself, might just be worth it. Shocker! Albuquerque, New Mexico, displaying bronze statues of Walter White and Jesse Pinkman from Breaking Bad in the near future. I'm not sure exactly the timeline on this, but it is confirmed. Those characters, not exactly the most heroic or fantastic characters to celebrate the uh, the choices of, but I think still a cool choice. And obviously like this loose connection, pop culture connection to the actual city in the real world. And uh, I think that this will look good as long as they're not, you know, terribly constructed. Uh, it will last a long time. We're in a world where people are like, why are you putting up statues? Why are you taking down statues? I got to say... Just stop making them of real people. <laughs> like, that's probably the simple solution. Because we know the whole story of Walter White and Jesse Pinkman. We know that, even if it's not the most heroic one. But we don't know about every single person out there. And some stuff tons tends to come to light later. I digress. That's a whole different subject. What, subject. what I really want to bring up is that I've got a chip on my shoulder. Albuquerque's getting their pop culture connection statues. Well, what the hell is my question here? Where is our totally unnecessary erection of a statue? I'm talking multi-million dollar misters. No, no, no. We don't need that. They don't even mist in town. I'm talking zero additional functions. Absolutely no bells and whistles. Just you and the statue. And we could have ourselves a statue. In fact, we could have two. I have done the research. There's been some campaigns thinking maybe a Wolverine statue would be cool. I would be so here for it. Also, Terry and Dean from FUBAR are a possibility. You could get a twofer statue from the guy who made the Hope BC Rambo statue in the ballpark of only like $35,000, right? I think it's doable. Or maybe we do Wolverine and it's even less money. We just need to figure out where. The biggest question is where would it go? Let me know what you think. You're listening to the Steve Reeve Podcast from 100.5 Cruise FM. Eddie Vedder was having absolutely none of it. Not a bar of it in Zurich as they were playing a concert. Pearl Jam, that is. She, uh, sorry, they threw out a woman in the audience who was acting a little too violent. Uh, she was acting like an animal as the band was playing the song Animal and was hitting the man in front of her over the head for filming the band's performance. So Vedder's asking them to turn the lights on. I saw the whole thing. I know it was annoying you. You were bummed out because he was filming the whole time. Has it just been the whole show or just now? Just now when I came over? Was it the whole time? Yeah, you film like everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the thing is, I know it upset you, but you can't bleep and hit him in the back of the head either. Even though there's any, you know, extenuating circumstances. He went on and on and on. Bottom line is, she did not get to see the end, the encore. Bruce Dickinson also calling out a fan in the audience at an Iron Maiden concert in Greece because that person had a gun, a flare shooting uh, device. <laughs> so not a true firearm, but still super dangerous to have in a crowded area. And Bruce Dickinson, in his own words, says, what did I see? A bleep with a bleeping flare. And yeah, Number the Beast was stopped down so that they could get to the bottom of that. Chris Evans, Captain America, and so many, so many other roles. Looks like he's looking to settle down. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it was kind of like a surprise admission. It felt very genuine. He was doing an interview with, uh, with Shondaland very recently and was asked, what are you laser focused on accomplishing now? And I think the question was kind of pointed in a maybe life and career kind of direction. Maybe a movie you want to get off the ground, a character you want to play. What is it that you work on you're laser focused on was the question. His answer was, you know what? We're, we're going to do this. 
We're going to do this. We're going to get... I'm going to give you a good answer, he says. He's kind of stumbling over himself, right? The answer would be that maybe I'm laser-focused on finding a partner. You know, someone that you want to live with. Look, I love what I do. It's great. I pour all of myself into it. But even in this industry, is full of pockets of doubt, hesitation, and recalibration. And on and on and on. It's something that it's kind of been a back-burner thing, I think, to him. Taking a lot of opportunities for a decade, he was Captain America. He had to, like, start therapy after accepting that role just because he knew how much it was going to affect him. He's committed now, in that same way, to finding a significant other. Your significant other can't even get you to commit to replacing the toilet paper on the roll. No, just loose on the counter isn't the assignment, Gary. Wednesday. This is the kind of story that I would have a hard time believing if it wasn't backed up by... Uh, police body cams 25 year old pizza guy delivery driver uh saved several children five kids from a burning home a two-story house in lafayette uh and uh, apparently he just was driving by wasn't even delivering to the house which was my assumption at first but no driving by saw the fire and thought no hang on don't have my phone with me i can't call 911 but i can't just drive by and just uh, watch that happen and then maybe on the news in the morning hear about horror happening right i'm sure it was running through his head but no he stopped and decided to run in he managed to break his way into the house which was on fire i think it's Woke everybody up, and there were five kids inside, aged 1, 6, 13, 18. And then that was the family, another 13-year-old sleeping over from another family. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Gets everybody out except for the 6-year-old. Nowhere to be found. So he goes back in, is searching through the whole house, smoke filling up, dangerous situation, the kind of thing that they say, don't do, don't be a hero because we don't want to lose you too. But he managed to save the day. Found the 6-year-old, jumped out of a two-story window, Not kidding. Injured himself on the fall, and then that's when the police body cams pick him up as he hits the ground and gets up with the little girl in his hands, hands it over to the authorities and goes, I need some oxygen. Let me have a minute. They treated him. He's fine. He's a freaking hero. And whatever he was getting tipped that night, it wasn't enough. Here's what's going on in the news. Rage Against the Machine getting some headlines back on stage again and making uh, waves every time they do. Most recently, calling out violence against Indigenous people here in Canada, citing a bunch of statistics, including an Indigenous person in Canada being 10 times more likely to be shot and killed by a police officer than a white person is. And more was delivered on stage both by the band and by the projection onto the screen behind them. Huge, huge night at Blues Fest in Ottawa where this is all on stage and can be seen in videos online. Meanwhile, Matt Skiba is questioning what we're all questioning. Is he in Blink-182 still? (laughs) It's a big question mark. People are calling it, what's my band again? Uh, And it was in an Instagram post answering back into a a commenter from a a, fan, from a listener. And he says, your guess is as good as mine. Regardless, I'm very proud and thankful for my time with Blink-182. We shall see dot dot dot. Maybe we'll see a reunion of the original lineup as has been teased by Tom DeLonge, but nothing has been confirmed in either direction. Hey Alexa, play the Steve Reeve podcast. Beer apparently could help you last the next heat wave? Question mark. Literally earlier this week, yesterday, weren't we just talking about how any amount of alcohol alcohol for anyone under 40 years of age is bad for them slash you? That's what I thought as well. And also, take this pint-sized story with a, like a full rimmed glass of salt. Absolutely. It's almost like everything is made up. Everyone is different. Nothing really matters besides what we do at the time that we have and take everything in moderation, including moderation, right? But a study has tried to make a, a correlation here between like a tip, basically a, a, a secret weapon that uh, if it's a hot, hot day, super, super hot, hot day, first of all, Drinking alcohol is going to dehydrate you, but they do say it's not just that. If you're dehydrated, drink half a pint of beer is one of the tips given, uh, including alcohol-free beer, because it's not necessarily the alcohol content, and then move straight on to water or like a sports drink with some electrolytes or something like that that is more designed to help you hydrate yourself. Okay, okay, okay. So it seems to me that probably the thing that's hydrating you is the water, right? I don't know about this one. I cannot claim credit for this. I found this on the internet from a poster named Joman, uh, but it got me because I'm a big Twilight Zone fan from back in the day. Uh, loved all of the, the the classics that would come on TV. You know, the channel surfing when I was a kid, the, the the retro channels. I was always glued to it. So, in my best impersonation, imagine if you will. A world in which people are shocked that Rage Against the Machine, writers of the song Killing in the Name of, are a political band. 
A world where Green Day fans react with anger and disbelief as the frontman who wrote an entire album called American Idiot decides to leave the country. A world where Pink Floyd fans are mad that Roger Waters, whose entire musical catalog is suffused with anti-war messages, is speaking out against war. A world where Star Wars fans complain of politics in a series where the soldiers are called stormtroopers and they work for an empire. In this world, the entire concept of art has been skewered to the point of absolute meaninglessness, nullified by the incessant ramblings of the ignorant in the Twilight Zone. <laughs> That's just too perfect for me. It boggles my brain. What anybody talking about these days? Thursday. K-Days begins in Edmonton tomorrow. Yes, the annual celebration has arrived once again. It's like Stampede's younger sibling. If you're not familiar at all, um, it's, I think that's a good analogy. It wants to do the same things, like be on for 10 days, offer weird and wonderful foods like craft dinner soft serve or, or pickle flavored cotton candy. Uh, and it, it's, you know, afraid of bulls though, so they just kind of stick to the carnival rides and lump in whatever else is going on at the expo center that week. That's kind of like the thing. And no Kevin Costner Marshall business. Just a couple of people dressed in turn of the 19th century period piece costumes walking around and waving at you. That's kind of what's what's going on. But it's still a pretty good time. Don't get me wrong. Don't get down on yourself, K-Days. Not every summer festival can be the greatest outdoor show on earth. Keep doing you, K-Days. Keep doing you. The cult, well, at least the lead singer of the cult recently, Ian Astbury, he jumped off of the stage at a performance this week in Washington, D.C. because he needed to rescue a fan put in a chokehold. You'd think to yourself, what is security doing there? But um, it happened lightning quick. He was right off of there and stopped the altercation from happening, got a hug from the man who had been choked, and then afterwards got back to the stage to restart the classic song Rain, going, brother, never ever put a chokehold on somebody. That's not bleeping cool. And saying the situation's done. You guys are separate from each other. Let's move on. The Killers have moved on to a new single. They are releasing Boy as of next month and a new album, which will be out early next year. So, uh, you know, they were already uh, debuting this song called Boy at a live Mad Cool Festival in the, in the month, but uh, actually available to everybody as of August 5th, and you can pre-save the track, stream it on your favorite services, and then early 2023, you'll get the uh, Pressure Machine uh, follow-up album. Zach Wilde as well is beyond honored in his own words to be able to join Pantera for a huge reunion celebration. They're going to be touring for uh, a little bit in 2023 and they just announced plans for it. The surviving members of the band and Zach Wilde, who has been a friend of theirs for quite some time, was invited to be alongside them. And he says he's beyond honored to be a part of this forthcoming tour with the remaining members of Pantera. Should be pretty crazy when it comes out. No dates specifically or tickets on sale that I'm aware of. Of, but it won't be long. Thanks for listening to the Steve Reeve Podcast from 100.5 Cruise FM. Weather's been great. We're like right in the thick of summer now. Another long weekend is on the horizon. How awesome does that feel, right? Not this weekend, but next. Shifting into August with some extra time to get out and enjoy this summer. But uh, a lot of people are feeling grounded by the price at the pump, right? Uh, a little hard to do that road trip when you're feeling like, uh, can I still eat? You know, uh, you know, a lot of people not feeling the love for how much they have to pay. Uh, still, you know, I, I just put seventy five dollars in the other day, and like that's a significant amount of money. And my significant other asked, "How much of the tank does that fill?" I'm here to tell you, less than half. Less than half. That's just about enough to make you want to test drive a vehicle at the dealership just to get your errands done, right? The gas prices are still so high, people are actually using the Stone Creek roundabout instead of taking the long way around. It's unbelievable out there. Friday. I have got one week left on the clock here for the votes to come in for the Firefighter Fit Steve photos. Uh, again, this is all for charity. The whole point of all this, including the whole point of the calendar itself that has been going on for years with the actual Fort McMurray Firefighters, is to raise money for five local charities with the Fort McMurray Firefighters Charities Association. That is what they do. And they were uh, awesome enough to ask me if I wanted to be a part of this and uh, be in the calendar. <laughs> said, you, you know, you, you know, like what firefighters look like, though, right? And they said, yeah, no, we'll help you out. We have a fitness nutrition plan, workout plan, all of it, and uh, went through it for 12 plus weeks. In fact, it was like another month after that. So four months of taking care of business until actual photo shoot day. But it went down. 
Have a photo with me rescuing a cat from a tree. I've got a photo rocking the fire hose. Yes, admittedly, I did actually soak the photographer with the fire hose because I didn't know quite how to work it. Now, they limited the pressure, so it wasn't like I was going to be destroying any equipment or anything like that, unless it was the water that seeped in, but it did happen. (laughs) Just a little spray down. Oops! That's how you get the good photo, though, I guess, because she definitely did an amazing job. Take a look for yourself. A couple of options for you at cruiseradio.com. Vote for which one you want to see in the actual calendar. And then as for the photos of the actual fit firefighters of Fort McMurray, you're going to have to get your hands on a calendar when they come out in the fall. Time to dive into some music news headlines. Pat Benatar at the forefront after declaring she's no longer going to be performing her song Hit Me With Your Best Shot at live performances. And she says it's out of respect for the victims and the families of mass shootings that have occurred in America just from this year alone, let alone, you know, the many, many others. Um, she says that while the song is a tongue in cheek kind of take it, 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 she wants to draw a line saying um we're not doing hit me with your best shot fans are having a heart attack and i'm like i'm sorry in deference to the victims of the families of these mass shootings i'm not singing it i tell them if you want to hear the song go home and listen to it uh, i can't say those words out loud with a smile on my face i'm not going on stage and soapboxing but that's my small contribution to protesting i'm not going to sing it tough she says Ed O'Brien has been speaking out about the possibility of Radiohead, uh, a future for the band. He was recently on the Lineup podcast and was asked about the band coming back together, answering, it might happen, but the other thing is, it might not. And does that matter? There's a truth to what we do, so we're not going to be one of those bands that gets together for the big payday. Meanwhile, sort of, a Radiohead side project, Smile, has been putting out new music uh, with Tom York at the forefront. So we'll see. We'll see. What is the weirdest thing you've witnessed at a theme park while you've been on vacation? A couple of families just got into a full-on brawl at Disney World Orlando, which is, yes, in Florida, so I'm not super surprised. Videos have been making it to the internet, and apparently it was over someone leaving the line to grab a misplaced cell phone and then having the audacity to try and get back to her place being held by family. You know, pretty normal stuff. Especially because one of the families was all wearing matching t-shirts and Mickey Mouse ears, so like I feel like they would look like they fit together. But somebody, somebody was not having a bar of it. Uh, great, now re- vacation's ruined for everybody, right? Except for the people watching the stupidity unfold. I haven't seen anybody uh, throwing hands like that in my time, but I have been in the right place, right time, to see an epic couple fight implode at Disneyland in L.A on the west coast Uh, the kind where you know one of those two people for sure got on a plane back home early you know tell me what's the weirdest thing you've witnessed at a theme park in your travels transmission over one more steve new podcast episodes happen every friday or just tune into the steve reeve show weekday morning starting at 5 30 a.m on 100.5 cruise fm